In this edition of Back in History, we take you back in time to the life and times of the first female Prime Minister of the United Kingdom. She was also the first female Prime Minister in the whole of Europe. She was known for her firm and resolute stance on issues of governance. She was one of the greatest women in the history of female participation in politics. She was powerful, highly connected, famous, loved by many, and hated by others. Her name, Margaret Hilda Thatcher. Welcome to this edition of Back in History. Margaret was born on 13 October 1925. She was born in Grantham, a small town in Lincolnshire, England. Her father was Alfred Roberts, while her mother was Beatrice Stevenson. Margaret's father was a Methodist preacher and a politician, serving as a town council member for 16 years before becoming the mayor of Grantham between 1945 to 1964. Margaret can thus be said to have learned the art of politics from home, but she went on to perfect the art with distinction in the many years of her involvement in British and international politics. Your only thoughts, Mrs. Thatcher, at this moment about sure. Mrs. Pankhurst and your own mentor in political life, your own father? Well, of course, I just owe almost everything to my own father. I really do. He brought me up. Um, to believe all the things that I do believe, and they're just the values on which I fought the election. And it's passionately interesting to me that the things which I learned in a small town, in a very modest home, are just the things which I believe have won the election. She attended Oxford University from 1943, during the height of the Second World War. While there, she studied chemistry. After graduation, she worked as a research chemist but her real interest was more in politics. In 1950, she ran for a seat in Parliament in the Labour-dominated constituency of Dartford using the slogan, quote, vote right to keep what is left. It is reported that her party nominated her as its candidate because, though relatively unknown at the time, Margaret was, unquote, well-prepared and fearless in her responses and questions. Margaret was a young unmarried lady at the time, and though she did not win the election, the signs were clear that she was made for the top. During the campaigns, she received overwhelming support from her parents and future husband, Dennis Thatcher. In 1951, Margaret married Dennis Thatcher, a wealthy businessman and in less than two years from their wedding, she gave birth to twins, Carol Thatcher and Mark Thatcher. Margaret nursed her twins briefly and proceeded to study law. And in 1953, she passed the bar exams and was called to the bar. She specialized in taxation law and spent the next years practicing law and combining them with politics. In 1959, Margaret Thatcher contested once more for a seat in Parliament, and this time around, she won the election. She served her term meritoriously and made noticeable contributions in Parliament. In 1961, Margaret Thatcher accepted an invitation to become a parliamentary undersecretary in the Ministry of Pensions and National Insurance. She later moved up the ministerial ranks becoming Secretary of State for Education and Science in 1970. Margaret maintained her popularity in the United Kingdom and in 1975, she defeated the former Prime Minister Edward Heath to take over the leadership of the Conservative Party. In 1979, Margaret Thatcher emerged as the Prime Minister of the United Kingdom and became the first female Prime Minister in the political history of the United Kingdom. Arriving at 10 Downing Street, the office of the Prime Minister of the United Kingdom, Margaret is reported to have said as follows, unquote, Where there is discord, may we bring harmony. Where there is error, may we bring truth. Where there is doubt, may we bring faith. Where there is despair, 
may we bring hope. Unquote. During her first time in office, her government lowered direct taxes while increasing taxes on spending. The government also sold off public housing and also introduced austerity measures and made other reforms in the United Kingdom. These steps taken by her government had serious impacts on the economy and caused a spike in inflation and unemployment and Margaret's popularity began to wane, but Margaret would go on to remain in power for many more years while continually making efforts to improve on the welfare of her people. In 1982, Argentina invaded the Falkland Islands, located about 8,000 miles from the United Kingdom. Thatcher immediately dispatched troops to the area, and in May 1982, British troops landed at a bay near East Falkland and captured the capital of Port Stanley and brought the Falkland War to an end. Back at home in the UK, the credit for success of the Falkland War went directly to the Prime Minister, Margaret Thatcher. The popularity rating of the Prime Minister began to improve, and in 1983, Prime Minister Margaret Thatcher won a second term in office. During this term, she worked hard to improve the economy of the United Kingdom and improve the public image and rating of her government. In what became a key part of her legacy, she embarked on the privatization of public utilities such as British Telecom, British Gas, British Airways, Rolls Royce, and a couple of other state-owned companies. She gave reasons for the privatization. She received commendations for the privatization and also received condemnation in the mix. At the end of her second term, Thatcher had become one of the most powerful women in the world. She had established herself as a political icon in the United Kingdom and at the global scene. In 1987, she won a third term in office as Prime Minister of the United Kingdom. During her third term, her government pushed for lower tax rates to the admiration of many. In November 1990, her popularity began to wane following her support for community charge, otherwise known as poll tax, which was widely unpopular to the people of the United Kingdom. Thatcher was advised by her cabinet members to consider stepping down to avoid being impeached. On 28 November of the said year, she officially resigned as Prime Minister of the United Kingdom and also resigned as leader of the Conservative Party. Before her resignation, she held a private audience with the Queen and made calls to several world leaders to discuss with them ahead of her resignation. Ladies and gentlemen, we're leaving Downing Street for the last time after 11 and a half wonderful years and we're very happy that we leave the United Kingdom in a very, very much better state than when we came here 11 and a half years ago. It's been a tremendous privilege to serve this country as Prime Minister. Wonderfully happy years, and I'm immensely grateful to the staff who have supported me so well. And may I also say a word of thanks to all the people who sent so many letters still arriving and to all the flowers. Now it's time for a new chapter to open, and I wish John Major all the luck in the world. He'll be splendidly served, and he has the makings of a great prime minister, which I'm sure he'll be in very short time. Thank you very much. Goodbye. She then made a final speech at the Commons. Her resignation was a shock to several of her admirers at home and internationally. Thatcher was replaced as head of government and party leader by Chancellor John Mayo. Thatcher, however, remained in parliament until 1992 and soon entered into the ceremonial House of Lords 
and began to write her memoirs. It should be noted that it was after retiring from the commons in 1992 that she was given a life title as Baroness Thatcher of Kestiven in the county of Lincolnshire, which entitled her to sit in the House of Lords. Later in her political career, Margaret Thatcher stopped appearing in public after suffering a series of small strokes. She however remained a reference point in politics in the United Kingdom and around the globe. On April 8, 2013, Margaret Thatcher, the first female Prime Minister of the United Kingdom and the first female Prime Minister in the whole of Europe, died of stroke in London at the age of 87. She received a ceremonial funeral with full military honours and church service at St. Paul's Cathedral on April 17, 2013. Her funeral service was attended by Queen Elizabeth II and her husband, the Duke of Edinburgh. That was the second time in the Queen's reign that she attended the funeral of her former Prime Minister after that of Winston Churchill in 1965. Margaret Thatcher was the longest serving Prime Minister in the history of the United Kingdom, having served for a total of 11 years and 209 days from 1975 to 1990. In 1975, when she defeated her then boss, Edward Heath, to become the leader of the opposition, Margaret was the first woman to lead a major political party in the United Kingdom. Having led the Conservative Party to victory in three consecutive general elections, Margaret Thatcher ranks among the most popular party leaders in the history of politics in Britain. At the foreign policy front, Margaret Thatcher undertook visits across the Atlantic, establishing an international profile and reputation for herself and in the process promoting her economic and foreign policies. She met with several world leaders and shared her views about governance with them. In the words of John Campbell, unquote, Margaret Thatcher was not merely the first woman and longest serving prime minister of modern times, but the most admired, most hated, most idolized, most vilified public figure of the second half of the 20th century. During her reign, she stayed controversy on some national and international issues, but Margaret Thatcher is nonetheless viewed favorably in historical rankings and public opinion of British Prime Ministers. Margaret came, saw, breathed the odds, and conquered the political landscape in the United Kingdom for several years and her memory shall remain green in the political history of the world for many more years to come. Thanks for watching this edition of Back in History and do remember to subscribe to the channel for regular notifications.